Pratibha, ma'am, request you to start. Thank you. Good evening, all. Thank you for joining uh, joining us today. So, on behalf of uh, Administrative Staff College of India, I would like to invite and welcome all of you to this learning series that we uh, hold on a regular basis. Today, we have a very particular topic, which is on innovations. Uh, in uh, plastic uh, in, uh, innovations for reducing plastics in urban India. So a century before when we invented this plastic, when the human uh, human invented this uh, plastic, we never knew that we will sit together one day and then think about, you know, how much of an environmental pollution this plastic is creating and how should we address that uh, issues. So um, yes, here we are discussing about plastics the environmental crisis that it has uh, created. So I think at least there are uh, in two ways the global community is thinking about uh, reducing the plastic pollution. The first one is about the structural uh, changes and the uh, systems design that we need to think about in order to reduce the plastics and also uh, the contributions of the brains putting together of the innovators. Um, how the innovators can actually contribute uh, to reducing the plastics. So uh, in that sense, today's webinar uh, particularly deals with the, um, the, the aim of today's uh, webinar is to showcase the innovation, innovative technologies and also business models, which uh, will be used for reducing the pollution and then uh, contribute to circularity. So today we have uh, some eminent speakers here to discuss about uh, the innovations as well as the uh, management practices of um, management practices of uh, plastic waste in India. So first of all, we have Mr. Uh, Kaushik Chandrasekhar, who is an assistant program manager with UNEP, who has somewhere around 13 years of experience working with solid waste management uh, systems and practices. I would like to extend a warm welcome to Mr. Uh, Kaushik Chandrasekhar uh, to this webinar. And uh, we are also joined by uh, Pride innovators from, from the industry, uh, Mr. Angit Magan, who is the CEO of Rita's Enviro Solutions uh, Private Limited. Uh, you will hear about the uh, very interesting innovations that have been done by the um, Rita's, uh, Rita's uh, Enviro Solutions, which includes this Rainmax tanks. And then uh, we are also joined by Mr. Mani Vajpayee from Banyan Nation. Banyan Nation is also an institution, uh, is an organization which helps the global brands to use more of the recycled products. And then uh, we have Mr. Uh, Ronak Vyas, uh, who is a manager of new projects and ESG from NEPRA Resource Management. Uh, you might have heard about NEPRA and their contributions uh, in India's uh, plastic waste management sector, particularly they um, they extend their services to the systems uh, <coughs> systems management, particularly the value chain. 
we have Mr. Manish Kothari, who is the founder of Rhino Machines. Um, uh, the, and also we have Mr. Ubendra Dwivedi, who leads the growth sector in the trash con. All of these innovators have contributed in, in great ways to addressing the plastic waste management, uh, plastic waste in, in our country, particularly in the urban uh, regions. So on behalf of ASCII, I would like to invite all of you for today's uh, webinar. And uh, Professor Chari V. Srinivas Chari, who is the director of ASCII and who is also CEO of the Wash Innovation Hub, will be moderating this uh, webinar uh, program. And we had uh, quite a bit of registrations. Uh, I am not sure how many of you have joined here, but I think uh, we have a good number from across the uh, regions and countries. Then uh, just uh, a few clarifications. Um, we will be sharing the PPT as well as the webinar recording. So um, uh, feel free to uh, Feel free to use the chat box and uh, raise your hands in case of you, in case you have any questions or comments. And if there is any additional materials that you require during the presentations, you feel uh, just send us an email. Uh, send us, uh, I mean, just uh, uh, notify us, and we will send it by an e by email to you. Uh, so, uh, with that, I would like to invite uh, Professor Srinivas Chari to set the context for this webinar and then take it forward from here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Adiba, and thank you, friends. Uh, uh, first of all, a very happy New Year to all of you. Uh, we are already in the first week, and we are starting the first week with a very glorious topic, which is a need of the hour, uh, is about plastics, managing plastics in the environment. So uh, I think uh, many of you know about Administrative Staff College. We work the, the perception and also uh, our practice is to work with the government, city governments, uh, state governments, national government. And as part of, we have established uh, uh, a new vertical called WASH Innovation Hub, which is about water, sanitation and hygiene, uh, which includes municipal solid waste management, which includes used water management, water efficiency. We strongly believe that uh, in, in India, there are bright minds, young entrepreneurs, innovators, startups who are trying to do a wonderful job uh, in, in addressing the problems of wash, water, sanitation and hygiene, but they do not get adequate opportunity to interface with the city and the state and the national governments. So the wash innovation up is an ecosystem basically to bring uh, innovators uh, and the city, state governments and national governments together because of our uh, convening power of, uh, uh, of having working with the government. So today on the call, we have uh, bright minds, young entrepreneurs. I'm the, uh, I think the uh, senior citizen in the group. Otherwise, all the participants and the speakers, including Kaushik or young uh, Turks. Uh, we are bringing a lot of cities to hear you out to understand what are the interesting practices out there that the cities and the states can embrace and uh, simplify the procurement procedures, simplify uh, roadblocks that exist and create ease of doing business for these innovators. And that's the motto of Wash Innovation Hub. We also bring financial institutions, we bring development partners into the conversation. But our main uh, interest is to connect the dots uh, connect relationship between innovators, uh, entrepreneurs, MSME sector, and the city governments. So that's the endeavor of the Wash Innovation Hub. This is part of that endeavor. Now, today we have uh, chosen uh, plastics as a theme. How do we reduce the plastics in the environment? And how do we reduce the marine litter, which is a, a very critical piece of uh, debate right now globally? right from Honorable Prime Minister making commitments globally to every country is actually speaking about it. Now, uh, two important uh, themes that we thought we will look at it. Number one, uh, plastics is a very small component, though of course it is a killer, but it's a small component of the larger municipal solid waste management ecosystem. So unless and until we fix the municipal solid waste management ecosystem, we cannot really address the problem of plastics. 
So we need dry resource centers or material recovery centers. We need segregation systems. Otherwise, we cannot do the other aspect of dealing with upcycling and recycling issues. So a couple of presentations are about strengthening the municipal solid waste management systems that would enable better circularity. So it could be better planning, it could be better infrastructure, it could be better service delivery on the municipal solid waste management side. We have NEPRA, we have Trashcon speaking about system improvement as Dr. Pratibha mentioned. The second component is again, very important. We have three, uh, uh, three critical, uh, three interesting speakers, I would say initiatives more than the speakers who are actually uh, addressing the circularity. So now that we have cleaned up the system, we have plastics coming into in a segregated way. How do you upcycle it? How do you put it back into the system? And how do you introduce a circularity is another uh, three set of speakers we would have. Mr. Mani Vajpayee, a very successful uh, uh, entrepreneur now, raised multiple rounds of funds and doing a fantastic job. We have Ankit working with a number of city governments. He recently won a, a startup award from under Amrut. Then we have uh, Mr. Manish Kotari also doing a lot of interesting work. So this is the order. Uh, it's not in the same sequence, but I, I'm going to call each one of them to speak about their experiences. But broadly speaking, we have two presentations which are trying to sort of uh, improve the system, as Dr. Pratibha said, in the solid waste management system. And then we have three speakers looking at promoting circularity by uh, upcycling the plastics coming out into the system. Of course, there is another interesting angle that we are not really looking at it, which is the next set of presentation. Next webinar is completely about recycling, repackaging, reducing the waste itself reducing the plastic uh, into the system. That's the next presentation, next webinar that we are targeting. And that's actually the mandate of the life mission. Honorable Prime Minister is speaking about life mission and is going to amplify it as part of the G20. Now, that's going to be the next level of conversation that we would have. But today, our focus is about system improvement, municipal solid waste system improvement, and then circularity through upcycling. So without taking much time, uh, we have uh, uh, a very young, uh, bright mind uh, who, who I know him well, uh, worked with ASCII also, uh, have a deep connection with him, Mr. Kaushik, and he is currently working with UNEP, doing some very passionately committed to uh, plastics and municipal solid waste management. He's been speaking about single-use plastic, he's been speaking about marine litter for a number of uh, years. I request him to set the context and give his perspective on what should be done to uh, deal with this plastic menace and marine litter, as we say. What are your thoughts from UNEP point of view or as a researcher's, uh, as a researcher point of view? What do you, Kaushik? Thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes very much, very, very much. much. All right, I'm just sharing my presentation. Uh, could you please confirm if you're able to see this? Yes, it is visible, Kaushik. All right. It's visible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, at the outset, uh, I'd like to thank uh, ASCII uh, and Professor Chari uh, for giving me this opportunity to uh, interact as a part of this initiative, um, which, is a, which is an ongoing initiative as a part of the WASH Innovation Hub. Uh, so my name is Kaushik Chandrasekhar and uh, Today, I'd be sharing some insights on assuming a holistic approach to understanding plastic waste management, especially in India. Uh, plastics largely in India uh, are seen as a commodity that provides convenience. Um, it provides a sound packaging solution at an affordable cost. But the issue, again, turns on when you look at the right-hand side is the end of life and how um, plastics is managed after uh, it's being used and disposed. Uh, mismanaged plastics are being burnt, dumped, littered, and sometimes also ingested by animals. If you look at the consumption, India consumes close to 16.5 million tons of plastics annually. And uh, this is constantly on the rise. 
if you look at the usage pattern on the right hand side, you will see that the majority, about 42% to plus 17%, it's about 59%, is utilized with the packaging sector itself. Uh, in terms of the quantity of the waste generated, this is close to about 3.4 million tons. That's uh, the CPCB figures. And still we find that about 40% remains uncollected. So there is a, a lot of scope for the collection infrastructure here to kind of improve. Uh, when we look at this compared to the municipal solid waste, we realize that plastic waste assume about 7 to 10%. Uh, it, it varies, uh, the, the CPCB figures talk about 7% of the total MSW, but it varies to about 10% in the urban areas. But with growing quantities and the mismanagement, there is some amount of leakage that has been observed into water bodies, especially in the coastal cities uh, and, and cities which uh, have water bodies within them. So you can see uh, the link uh, this this is the link between plastic waste that is generated in the uh, in the uh, land based areas and what has been observed in the water bodies. This has been established already in multiple studies that there has been a direct linkage. Close to about eighty percent of uh, of of marine plastics have been linked to land based origin. We find that uh, the impact of this. Uh, plastics which are getting leaked into the marine environment is very evident, especially when we talk about the damage that is done to the biodiversity. But the larger point that we have here is that it has made its way into the food chain. And we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, microplastics being evident into salt that we consume and the seafood that is being uh, consumed by us uh, on, on a regular basis. Now, considering this adverse impact that uh, the plastic and plastic waste management has had on, on, on uh, the environment, UNIA 5.2 resolution was agreed upon very recently, and this was uh, uh, in, in March 2022. Uh, you know, UNIA is the United Nations Environment Assembly. Uh, this was largely to negotiate a legally binding instrument with, 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 with uh, you know, multiple countries on board. And uh, this was to address the complete life cycle of plastic right from the cradle to grave. We're talking about right from production of plastic to finally when it gets disposed. Uh, the first meeting of this negotiation was, was actually held in December 2022. And a range of issues were discussed uh, with multiple stakeholders. We've, uh, right from informal uh, sector inclusion to uh, the kind of technologies that have to be taken on board were discussed at depth. Uh, the second meeting uh, is, is scheduled uh, in, in May 2023, and that is the INC2. We're positive that you know, uh, these negotiations would come in and we would have a strong legal binding uh, uh, instrument that will guide plastic waste management in, in, in multiple countries. If you look at India, the plastic waste management rules have largely governed this space. We've seen it evolve over time. Uh, we've seen multiple updations that have happened. Um, two major uh, updates that could be shared, uh, which are worth note noting is uh, the EPR guidelines that uh, uh, were notified in 2022 and the SUP ban notification that came out in August, 2021. So the SUP ban speaks about the thickness uh, uh, of plastic bags as well, and also talks about those commodities that would be banned after the 1st of July, 2022. So largely the ban was on the manufacturer import stocking distribution and use. Uh, they have identified 19 categories of products that would be banned and will not be available for utilization in India. This notification also spoke of uh, plastic bags with a minimum thickness level that needs to be adhered to. Uh, now that we've actually crossed December 2022, it's 120 microns that is uh, that that is currently uh, uh, you know uh, being notified. Prior to that, it was 75 micron between 30th September and December 31st, uh, December 31st 2022. So this is the set of 19 banned categories. Uh, some some very uh, uh, potent. Um, uh, uh, 
commodities that we generally utilize like straws have been banned. Um, plastic cups, plastic forks that are of single use category, uh, which are made of uh, uh, polystyrene. Um, ice cream sticks, uh, balloons, uh, which uh, have been utilized, plastic flags uh, with, with, with uh, the plastic sticks, which have been utilized, plastic stirrers. Uh, these are a few which are worth mentioning. The second update, uh, like I mentioned, was uh, the extended producer's responsibility, where we've had uh, the government mandate uh, 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 annual targets for um, obligated entities. When I say obligated entities, they are the PIBOs or the producers, importers, brand owners, um, and the plastic waste processors who are typically uh, recyclers. So uh, four categories uh, have been identified, rigid, flexible, single use, uh, and multi-layered. And uh, the targets are as per uh, the, uh, uh, the collection, uh, the end of life, reuse, recycling, and the recycled plastic content that will be put back into, uh, into packaging. To manage all of this, we've had centralized portal that has been created by CPCB. And uh, all the transactions would be uh, with the help of this portal. So what are the options that we have to handle waste uh, in India? At the start, we are talking of uh, uh, demand reduction, uh, where we think of uh, uh, refuse and reduce. Um, we talk of reuse and refurbish, where we talk of repair. Um, mechanical recycling, largely, we talk of where you know it, it includes sorting, shredding, washing, um, drying, grinding, and finally granulating it. So this is uh, the the stream that occupies the lion's share as far as recycling in India is concerned. And and uh, like the the slide mentions, we have close to 90 percent. Which uh, uh, of recycling that happens through uh, mechanical recycling in India. So, as far as chemical recycling is concerned, we have, uh, uh, you know, largely we talk of uh, pyrolysis, where we break the uh, the polymer chain, and uh, basically from plastic waste, we are talking of uh, generating oil from it. So, uh, this is uh, not very prevalent in India, where we are talking of a little lesser than 1% of plastic waste being handled through chemical feedstock recycling. The other form is of energy recovery, where we're talking of uh, uh, aspects such as uh, incineration, co-processing, where this is used as a fuel feedstock. Uh, plastic waste is used as a fuel feedstock and uh, also covers, uh, you know, where uh, they utilized in making roads, uh, tiles, paper blocks, and and this form, uh, as you see in on, on the slide here, uh, is is the least preferred. So whenever we talk of uh, recycling, uh, uh, you know those commodities which cannot be completely recycled is where we go and for energy recovery. The sector as as big as plastic waste, of course, has challenges, um, and and I'd like to uh, uh, dwell into a few. Uh, Source segregation has remained uh, one of the major issues as far as uh, uh, urban centers have been concerned, which has led to a lot of contamination uh, in the waste collected. Uh, when we talk of plastic, commingled plastics have to be sorted, they have to be cleaned, and then they have to be recycled. When you have to do all of this without source segregation, it leads to a lot of increased costs. Uh, it, 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 it costs manpower, it increases the, the handling, uh, 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 you know, cost behind it, thereby also lowering the handling capacity or, uh, you know, how much a potential uh, uh, um, uh, installation can handle uh, plastic waste. So uh, standardization has also been one of the issues uh, that, you know, standardization can actually help uh, increase or boost the recycling capacities. Let me just give you an example. For instance, if we standardize uh, packaging for, uh, for ketchup uh, bottles, uh, for instance, we talk of a similar color, size, or a resin that could be utilized. This way, what will happen is the collection becomes easier and the recycling capacities could be boosted because we're talking of similar kind of resins being uh, taken in after the post-consumer phase. Just talking about this a little further, 
when we speak of pet itself uh, the cap the bottle and the label around it are actually made of three different resins uh, so uh, typically the cap is of uh, pp we talk of the the label which is made of uh, pvc and then the pet bottle itself so when when uh, we have to uh, recycle this this commodity as as one they have to be separated into different fractions and then uh, recycled so uh, otherwise in case we utilize them as one then it ha- the the quality of recyclate gets hampered and this uh, uh, impacts the uh, uh, limits uh, uh, impacts the limits and where it can be actually utilized the recyclate can be utilized finally into an application now this is where we talk of innovation right so uh, uh, where we require innovation to come in and see that yes this is there are methods available where we can make the separation possible uh, there are uh, uh, technological solutions possible where we can automate this process uh, currently uh, many of these uh, there many of startups are actually working on this on on these lines to ensure uh, such processes are automated so that uh, uh, more and more uh, recycling levels can actually be achieved we're talking about low value plastics low value plastics play a very very major role um, uh, uh, in in, uh, in in ensuring that plastic waste gets finally processed uh, it's a major point of concern because uh, it has a very low market value typically we are talking of pouches uh, uh, you know multi layered pouches gutka covers uh, which get littered and they are not effectively collected uh, because they have a very low uh, market value we are looking at the ambit of epr uh, or the extended producers responsibility to look at these streams more carefully so that uh, the necessary support both financially uh, can be provided uh, to the municipality so that these streams are collected and are not found littered uh, uh, in 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 various garbage vulnerable points achieving circularity is another point that i would want to uh, uh, to speak about out a little more in detail uh, it's a key point especially giving the uh, the example of pet uh, we talk of how pet is recycled and it's converted to apparel but the problem is yes although we have a solution at hand where we recycle pet and take it uh, and prepare apparel and you know it becomes t-shirts and shirts to be worn but with each wash of this apparel there are potential microfibers and microplastics being generated thereby what happens is uh, we are shifting one problem into the other uh, from macro plastics we are moving moving into micro plastics uh the other points uh, include you know retrieval of leaked plastic waste from local water bodies uh, of course implementation of the ban of sups is very very pivotal we are looking at uh, uh, you know availability of alternatives on ground that is another major major factor uh, big beyond which you know these bans would not be very effective uh, and of course the enforcement of the plastic waste management rules uh, 2016 there have been some in- innovations uh, uh, which are available like i mentioned uh, there are uh, innovations that are required right across the plastic value chain and uh, they must target each and every challenge that uh, the sector faces uh, and here we see some innovations that are currently pre- uh, currently pre- but these are not an exhaustive list but they've definitely made a change we're talking about the reverse vending machines which kind of ease the pet collection process uh, these have been installed in multiple railway stations in 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 uh, uh, in airports to uh, to accept pet bottles so that they can be crushed into pellets uh we are also looking at refillable um uh, solutions uh this is largely to curb packaging plastics so uh the the, the solution that you see are mobile re- refilling stations the you know that are available in multiple cities uh we talk of technological solutions such as the bubble barriers um you know this is available to collect waste from water bodies um Uh, largely through perforated tubes so because there is a barrier that is created in the water the the waste is actually diverted into a certain uh, uh, certain direction and then collected uh, uh, using uh, using uh, mechanical collection so we're talking of floating uh, booms that are there uh, a similar solution was actually uh, installed in the hussein sagar lake in in hyderabad 
uh, we saw that it was a major success where close to 200 to 300 kilos of uh, waste was collected on a daily basis and then taken to the uh, nearby material recovery facility for uh, sorting and uh, processing. Um, innovation, uh, I would also talk about not only in the, in the terms of coming up with technical solutions, but also with the kind of approach. Uh, we also found that uh, there have been some very innovative approaches to uh, uh, collection of waste. Uh, uh, for example, the Shop With Your Waste campaign and the Garbage Cafes, where which talks about a barter system where uh, you, know, uh, you can approach um, uh, the nearby shops and have this exchanged for uh, you know, FMCG commodities. Uh, in return. So uh, these have been prevalent in, in cities like Panjim and, 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 and Delhi, South Delhi Municipal Corporation. Uh, so innovations are the need of the hour uh, and are, are, are required right across the plastic value chain. Uh, I'd like to leave you with a few thoughts um, and, and, and to start off with, uh, uh, like I mentioned, innovations right on top we have the design for environment standardization, uh, which is very, very important, especially to meet uh, the new EPR norms which are coming through. Emphasis on collection of low value plastics is, is a mandate. Uh, while we have streams like uh, a PET already being collected because of uh, uh, existing market price, the low value plastics are, one, uh, are those which are found littered often uh, uh, in, in cities. And the EPR mandate should look at, uh, you know, um, incentivizing these streams uh, so that collection can happen more, uh, 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 you know, uh, to, uh, more of, of these uh, low value plastics happen uh, at the city level. Uh, the EPR is a very, very sound opportunity as far as uh, uh, the industry collaboration is concerned. Uh, the industry should look at partnering with the municipal corporations, evolving models on its own. Uh, the, the current guidelines give that, that kind of a space where models can be evolved and uh, uh, industry can come forward and work with the municipalities to ensure uh, collection is, is, is done and their targets are met. Um, we're talking about uh, support for innovation that is very, very key, especially to come up with, uh, 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 with solutions uh, for the challenges that are being met at the city level. Uh, informal sector uh, is, is one of the major key pieces uh, without which the plastic waste management uh, sector would be incomplete. The current EPR does not kind of address this issue. Uh, we should look at kind of uh, 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 getting the informal sector into the mainstream uh, so that they are not left uh, uh, you know, unaddressed. Uh, we have to look at sound implementation of ban of uh, uh, sound implementation of the ban on the SUPs, and finally, of course, uh, you know, identifying potential alternatives for the SUPs that have been banned, and uh, adhering to the segregation norms that have been put up by the municipal solid waste management rules and plastic waste management rules. With this, I'd like to close my presentation, and I'll be uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Kaushik, uh, for. Uh giving a, uh, a, a complete overview on the legal framework, the recent changes, also the global uh, trends, and some of the challenges uh, hampering the, the progress of reducing plastics in the environment. Thank you very much for a fantastic uh, presentation. Uh, I think uh, the data as well as analysis presented by you will be very, very useful for our cities as well as our participants here. Now, one question before I invite... Uh, some of our uh, champions who are doing some fantastic work. You know, you mentioned about uh, UN Environment Assembly, which met in Feb, and also subsequently they're going to meet again uh, very recently. Now, you mentioned that there could be a potential international legal binding uh, uh, interventions. So what do we mean by this? What do we mean to India? Uh, what do you mean to our cities as well as to our entrepreneurs? When you say internationally legally binding interventions, so what does it, what does it, what are the changes you envisage? So, uh, uh, Sari, just just to uh, kind of dwell on uh, international conventions that have already been there, such as the Basel Convention, on on the basis of which 
a lot of our rules have been based. Our hazardous waste management rules have come out of uh, the Basel Convention. So similarly, we are looking at uh, one such convention which will be legally binding, but uh, the the nuts and bolts of it are being negotiated at this level right now. Uh, what is going to be uh, covered? What is not? Technically. One thing that we're very sure of is the complete plastic value chain is being covered right from production to the disposal of uh, uh, the plastic. Uh, we go, you know, we are looking at different technologies that would be, uh, you know, coming into play. Uh, we're talking about different stakeholders who, who would have to be represented at. Uh, you know, just to give you an insight, we also had stakeholders. Uh, like the informal sector who, who were represented in such meetings. So I think this is very key in terms of uh, every country interacting and coming together to say that plastic is a point of concern. Uh, 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 the waste management, plastic waste management is something that we need to look at with, with a, a definite lens. Uh, we have to kind of look at definitions that go into each of this uh, which which have to be harmonized all across countries because the, it's not the definition the, the definitions that we use for plastic waste in India may not be the same uh, you know which you know you find in other countries so largely a, a convention like this would look to harmonize these uh, uh, a data collection b we're talking about very key definitions that would be there number three on monitoring and verification protocols and how we'd be able to do uh, monitoring and verification and number four. Uh, marine plastics as such uh, is a global issue. Uh, this is not something that would be uh, defined by a single country because there are waters being shared by uh, different countries. Uh, so this is uh, a solution that would have to be arrived with the consensus of multiple countries. So this is what we're trying to do uh, uh, you know, in, in terms of these negotiations. We're positive that uh, over uh, these meetings that are being held, uh, Two to three years, we we would have a strong binding um, uh, uh, instrument that will kind of guide the plastic waste management in different countries. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Kaushik, there are quite a few questions in the chat box. We'll take these questions later in the conversation. But if you could kindly uh, spend a bit of time to respond to Kamal of the, those technical as well as larger questions, uh, particularly on the MLPs. Uh, I think a few technical questions are there. If you could kindly address some of them, uh, I'll greatly appreciate. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we invite uh, now uh, some of our champions uh, who are closely associated with Wash Innovation, but also doing some fabulous work in uh, uh, reducing the plastics in the environment. Uh, we begin with uh, Mr. Ankit Magan, who is the Director of Rita's Envaro Solutions. Uh, and I request him to start his presentation. Uh, uh, Mr. Ankit, if you could keep your presentation to uh, seven, eight minutes and then give some time for a uh, bit of time for conversation. Uh, over to you, Mr. Ankit. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And thank you, ASCII, for giving us this platform. I'll just start sharing my screen. Is my screen visible? Yeah, now it's visible. You can uh, probably expand it and make it full screen. Yeah, that's right. great. Go ahead. So um, our innovation is into field of uh, stormwater management and rainwater harvesting by, by name called RainMax. We started uh, year 2017 where uh, we were stuck in one of the heaviest traffic because of rain in Gurgaon. And we had nothing to do there. We thought that, can we solve this flooding problem? What is the major problem? Then we realized that uh, during drought, this water, we don't have any water. And during uh, rainy season, this water is getting flooded. So at that moment, we realized that we can do something called rainwater harvesting, where we can recharge this extra water uh, using various process. After doing a lot of research, we came to know that uh, rainwater harvesting can be recharged, can be soaked, can be stored and reused. So what is the issue? Why uh, there is flood problem? And then uh, after doing research, we came to know that uh, there were a lot of rainwater harvesting pits 
but since maintenance is a concern so uh, people were not able to maintain and these pets used to get choked and uh, that is one of the reason water was also not getting recharged and uh, flooding was a major issue then we realize after doing research that can there be an, any alternative that is when rainmax was developed so rainmax product basically solved two major problem one obviously it conserve the fresh water that is rain water secondly instead of rcc where we use a lot of cement also we are using waste plastic to conserve water without deteriorating the quality of water so rainmax is made up of recycled polypropylene material which we produce in india only and which can take good amount of load so top surface can, can be used for anything like parking driveways or landscaping area and these tanks are 96.5% void which is uh, like if you are making 100 uh, liter of tank you can store 96 liter of water inside those tank and it is very easy to handle secondly this these tanks take very less space as compared to normal rcc tank and construction of these recycled plastic tank is very easy we have in 4 lakh 14000 liter storage tank in 48 hours whereas rcc tank usually takes somewhere around 1 one, one and a half months so there are lot of advantages of uh, these recycled plastic tank which includes the installation time and cost is very less since it's plastic the life cycle is very huge and uh, we give warranty for 30 years maintenance and cost is negligible as compared to conventional tank and these tank can be very much uh, you know, we can relocate these tank we can increase the size any time i'll i'll like to show one small video before uh, before we uh, take it forward just a second i hope my video is visible so what we do initially uh, for making these tanks we first excavate after doing excavation we do base preparation there is no pcc no rcc nothing is required it's just a kachcha base where we are putting stone chips and sand and compacting it and then we lay a cloth called geotextile through which water can only circulate nothing else so these are the recycled polypropylene tanks where it is a combination of large and small plates and assembling these plates are super easy so depending on the space we can increase the height of these tank so after the base is done it hardly takes few hours to install this recycled polypropylene tanks so in case of unusual house it will take hardly 2 to 3 hours to install your rainwater harvesting tanks because there is no slab no cement nothing is involved the tank is ready we just need it we just need to wrap it with geotextile and backfill it now these tanks are installed next to highways as well airports government building individual houses for a lot of builders also we are doing these tanks and these can be used for store and reuse purpose as well best part is after the tank is done you can have lush green garden on top of it or a parking so in case space is a constraint these recycled plastic tank can be very well used
So as I was telling you, these are uh, very easy to install maintain time and cost is negligible as compared to normal RCC tank. So these tank can be used for industries, government building, builders, highways, flyovers, parks, airports, and many other places. So imagine the kind of construction that is going on every in every building or every highways we require rainwater harvesting. So we can use these uh, recycled plastic tanks and uh, we can install that in a few hours. So these tanks, uh, these are a picture of some of the installation where we have installed in highways, government hospital, and in few of the societies. So as of now, uh, we are using roughly around 9,20,000 kg of recycled PP every year, but we will triple it by end of 2025. As I mentioned, the top surface can be used for parking, driveway, or landscaping. And in the first picture, you can see below this, there is a 6 lakh liter tank. And now the industry is using this rainwater uh, for their process units. Best part is if you compare the initial costing, that is very less as compared to uh, RCC tank. This is an example where RCC tank was costing roughly around 32 lakh 80 thousand and recycled polypropylene tank cost them around 16 lakh 60 thousand. These are some of the video. I'll share the links with you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ankit. Uh... A uh, fantastic initiative. Uh, many participants have appreciated your initiative. In fact, uh, you're solving uh, two problems. Hello. Uh, you're, uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, reducing the water stress I'm in urban good, areas. Yeah. At the same time, you are creating an opportunity to put back uh, the way, you know, the plastics into appropriate use and upcycling the products and solution and coming up with a very fabulous solution. Now, where do you source this uh, plastic material? How do you work? Ankit, are you there? He's, he's finding it difficult to hear, sir. Probably need to. Uh, can you hear? Uh, can you hear me, uh, Nilgiri? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Mr. Ankit, yes, sir, we can hear you. Ankit, can you hear me? Ankit, uh, you, you need to okay. unmute. Now you can unmute yourself. Okay, we will take uh, questions later. Uh, there's enough uh, uh, time we can uh, pick it up, pick up questions later. I now invite uh, uh, Mani Vajpayee, founder and CEO of Banyan Nation. In fact, uh, uh, Mani is one of those early uh, starters who sort of uh, uh, works with uh, global brands like Unilever. Uh, created a new, <clears throat> uh, new thought leadership in. Uh, encouraging these brands to promote uh, recyclable plastics and reduce the usage of virgin plastics. So Mani, welcome. And I request you to share your story and uh, how the journey is and what needs to be done. Over to you, Mani. Thanks so much, Professor Ravin. Uh, Professor Chari has known us uh, from our very early days. I mean, he's seen our journey. Uh, always excited uh, to come and talk at ASCII. Uh, I know there's a time crunch going on, so I'll try and make it super fast. Uh, why don't I just uh, share my screen here? Uh, <clears throat> I hope nothing bad is showing up. Uh, let me Good. See. Yeah, this is fine. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, see, we, we wanna, we're a plastics recycling company. Let's keep this simple. Uh, we help brands use more recycled plastic than virgin plastic. For example, our work primarily involves working with top brands, uh, whether it is uh, Unilever or Rickett Benkiser. Oh, let me do one thing better. Uh, this is like your popular Harpic bottle that you use in the bathrooms. Uh, this is your comfort bottle. Uh, those are Shell, Castrol, uh, HPCL, IOCL. Pretty much uh, a lot of companies in the lube industry and in the FMCG industry that use polyolefins. Polyolefins involves two types of plastics, PP and PE. Uh, so we are one of the pioneers in uh, driving circularity. 
And in this case, it is bottle to bottle circularity that we are globally uh, known for. Uh, so that's really what we do. Uh, again, a 30 second summary. We have a factory in Hyderabad that's widely regarded as one of the best plastic recycling facilities in the country. Uh, we also have a pan India supply chain, uh, which means that our plastic comes from across the country. I mean, there was mention of source segregation. So we work with the informal recyclers who do the segregation and give us only the material we want. So that's in a nutshell what we do. We all know that the use of recycled plastic is an idea whose time has come, right? Because of the EPR regulations and the global mandates, all companies are in fact required to use recycled plastic. So uh, we as a company help these companies achieve that. Once again, India's uh, supply chain is driven by the informal recyclers. So me, Raj, Rashi, Venkat, the team here at Banyan Nation, uh, our vision is rather than uh, minimize the interaction with the informal recyclers, we integrate the informal recyclers into our supply chain rather than displace them. Just give me one second. Huh? Just give me one second. Apologize uh, for that. Uh, there was some background noise that, that I didn't want to uh, bother you guys. Uh, so rather than displace the informal recyclers, what Banyan Nation does is we integrate the informal recyclers. Uh, if you think about uh, the value chain in the country, I think you all know this. I'm just setting the context for you. There are millions of informal recyclers spread across every street corner, across every city in India. It's not like you'll find something different in Delhi and something different in Hyderabad. Uh, we look at the supply chain as four layers. One is the itinerant collectors. The word itinerant means people who are moving. They can't collect more than 10 to 20 kgs per day. The second fragment is the street corner stationary recyclers like the Kabadiwalas or the Bhandiwalas that you see at every street corner in India. They have a very small space. They collect paper, metal, plastic, e-waste. Then you have the larger aggregators and segregators, which we call the layer three, and then finally the recyclers. So we find the sweet spot between the layer two and layer three, and we work in bringing the materials into our company. So rather than go door to door, we directly work with the informal recyclers. Now, again, some challenges in segregation were mentioned. I'll quickly breeze through them. Look at the red bin in front of you. Just because everything is white, they put it inside here. Notice that this pipe is probably made from PVC, helmet made from PP, bottle from PE. So all these, when you mix it up, you get cross resin contamination that is pretty useless in nature. So uh, the informal recyclers mix up these materials and then they grind them into these kinds of chips. So what Banyan Nation has realized is because of the complexity in the supply chain, lack of segregation, and lack of quality in recycling, global brands do not want to use recycled plastic. And that is where Banyan Nation comes in. We've transformed the industry by bringing in two innovations. One is a data platform to integrate the informal recyclers. And the second one is a backend plastic washing technology that cleans the plastic and makes it into high quality granules. I think the earlier speaker mentioned about mechanical recycling, and that's what Banyan Nation does. Albeit we do it at a very uh, uh, high level or we do it in a very uh, sophisticated manner. Uh, moving forward, what are the two innovations? As I mentioned, how do you integrate map the informal recyclers? What you're seeing on the screen, every dot represents the layer two that I just described earlier, the stationary aggregators. So in Hyderabad alone, there are 2,500 stationary aggregators. So we started mapping them and started getting analytics. So we know that for every square kilometer in Hyderabad, there are four stationary aggregators, which really means that for every 250 homes, there is one Kabadiwala, right? So it's like the reverse vending machine or the deposit refund schemes you're talking about. You don't need to install anything. There is already a human reverse vending machine sitting there for the last 30 years collecting paper, plastic, metal, and giving you uh, the money back again. So that's the kind of uh, integrative power we need to leverage when building these systems. The next thing is we know their phone numbers, prices, volumes, frequencies. And as a result, we are able to develop a pan-India supply chain of these materials. So that is how our supply chain works. It's, a, it's mounted on a digital platform. 
Um, once again, we are not a trash company in the literal sense that we don't accept any plastic. We ask our suppliers, whether they are formal companies or informal recyclers, to segregate the plastic based on a quality specification that my customer wants. So in this case, if you talk about the bottle grid I'm seeing in the back, uh, we are asking the informal recyclers to segregate the HDPE bottles and create that bail for us. And moving forward, I'll not take more than a couple of minutes to close this out. You need to figure out a way to eliminate these contaminants. If you look at these bottles, you have labels, adhesives, ink, sprints, remnant products that need to be cleaned out. So we developed the de-inking label removal plastic washing technologies. This is our plant in Hyderabad. Um, we have a washing technology that eliminates over 90% of the surface contaminants. On top of it, we have other sorters, resin sorters, and fairly advanced recycling equipment that allows us to produce these granules or pellets that are comparable in performance to virgin polymer as much as possible because uh, with repeated recycling, the cross-chain linkages of polymers weakening it out, weakening out. So we um, work with the brands in enhancing the quality of these uh, materials. Uh, what you will now see is labs around the world use our material to use these mainstream packaging. We won a bunch of awards. I'm going to skip that. Uh, uh, maybe to give you a context, this is a slightly older slide. We've actually closed the 500 million bottle mark in the last 12 months, actually. So per year, currently half a billion bottles, Surf Excel, Sunsilk, uh, Tresem, all these are being made by Banyan's recycled plastic. And our capacities are now going to increase much further in the next uh, three to five years uh, as we scale our business. Last point, the, uh, the Kabadiwala that you're seeing on the screen is holding a Surf Excel bottle which uses 50% of our recycled plastic, which comes back to our factory in Hyderabad and is going back to the Kabadiwala. So this is like a true circular loop. Um, there is all surfex cells in the country. There is no surfex cell bottle in the country that is made from virgin polymer. All surfex cell bottles that are in circulation in the country have been replaced with Banyan Nation's recycled bottle. So there's no further larger demonstration of true circularity there. So that in a nutshell is what we do. Uh, you can always reach out to us at contact as a Banyan Nation. Uh, happy to answer some of the questions on the chat window. And thanks for the opportunity, Professor Chari, as always. Thank you. It's a wonderful uh, initiative and wonderful presentation, uh, uh, Mani. <clears throat> so it's great to hear that uh, uh, it's no longer a pilot. It's actually the products that we buy uh, from the market has uh, uh, much of recycling material going back into the system and to an extent of 50%, as you said. I mean, that's a great, great news. Uh, can you, from a layperson's perspective, can you give some brands or names where, uh, from your experience, that the uh, they're replacing virgin plastic and then using the recycled material? From a common person's perspective, what sort of things are happening? Would you like to give some names so that we yeah. can relate to this whole circularity? No, absolutely. See, uh, uh, as, as I just discussed, Pro Professor, uh, uh, the entire Unilever uh, uh, product portfolio, uh, so uh, we'll break it down very quickly. Unilever generally has home care, personal care, and fabric care segments. So when you talk about home care, you're talking about floor cleaners, bathroom cleaners. Uh, when you're talking about personal care, you're talking about the lotions, shampoos, and the body washes. And lastly, you have the uh, fabric care, laundry detergents. All these materials, uh, irrespective of uh, uh, any brand, they're made from oh, high density. That is one kind of uh, uh, from high density uh, uh, polyethylene, which is HDPE. Now, uh, I'll just go one step further. When we talk about HDPE, uh, Professor <laughs> Polypropylene. There are several subgrades to it, meaning that HDPE actually has injection grade, it has blow grade, and it has extrusion grade. So when you talk about the pipes in the market, they say HDPE pipe. You can't take a pipe and make a bottle because the chemical and physical property are different. Right. So for all the young uh, entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs uh, in the call today, um, Segregation of plastics based on quality specifications and engineering parameters is the need of the hour. 
and the understanding that not all plastics are the same is the critical aspect. Now, moving to your question, Vaseline, Serpexel, Sunsilk, Tresem, uh, all products, Harpic, Detol are made from recycled resin. Uh, we also work extensively with the lube companies, uh, Shell, Castrol, HPCL, IOCL. There's, there's a lot of engineering uh, rigor in this, uh, Professor Chari. For example, a shampoo bottle will sit in a store, maybe Pratnadeep store, in an AC room. Whereas an engine oil bottle sits in the sun in a petrol bunk. Yeah. So the drop test requirement, the environmental stress cracking requirement. So, so for Banyan Nation, I think you know us very closely, but uh, for the larger audience here, uh, we are an engineering company first. Uh, whether it is data engineering or whether it is polymer engineering, then we cater to our customers. Um, so we are a materials company rather than, oh my God, uh, we don't take an emotional stand on here. I think emotional stand is very required, but we are a group of engineers that is trying to solve the supply chain problem and the material quality problem first, and then uh, uh, everything else next. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Mr. Mani, there are quite a few questions in the chat box. If you could spend about two, three minutes to uh, address them, including uh, a request coming from Manisha to join your group. So, uh, <laughs> so I think probably you can take a parallel lead. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, I, you need I, to be careful. I'm known to uh, <laughs> sell sell more than I can deliver. So, maybe I'm not. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I now invite uh, uh, Mr. Rona from uh, Nepra Resource Management Private Limited. As I said, Nepra is again a thought leader in uh, material recovery and this right kind of segregation and recovery is super important for creating uh, material for, uh, uh, you know, probably for Anket and for money because somebody has to aggregate it, somebody has to segregate it so that uh, circularity can be achieved. So I now leave it to Mr. Rona to share their experiences. What sort of projects are they doing? Particularly in Ahmedabad, you have a fabulous PPP project. Uh, if you could share some of uh, thoughts, what you do and how you contribute to minimizing plastics in the environment. Over to you. Thank you so much, Professor Chari. And thank you for uh, for inviting me at this uh, at this platform. It's, it's my pleasure to be here. And I'll share my screen and then I'll start uh, with my presentation. So is my screen visible? Yes. Uh, you can probably go for full screen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. So uh, I'll start with what are the challenges that uh, are there in this sector? However, it has been very beautifully covered by, by Professor Chari, by uh, Kaushik Ji and all. But I'll still take you through a few of them, which we are trying to solve through our um, innovative solution right so uh, and then i'll uh, also share a video of the automated mrf the automated solution which we have which is operational in indoor at a very large scale of 300 tons per day we have five of those in five five cities and we also have upcoming projects and uh, then i'll also share the uh, main impact of that right so i'll start my presentation now so what are the main challenges whenever we see, you know, what happens to waste after it is collected from our household is it usually goes to some sort of landfill site and the informal sector is either into a collection or it then catches fire and all those. So there's a lack of adequate infrastructure as also has been highlighted through uh, my previous speakers that we need adequate infrastructure to handle the type of waste that has been generated over here. And it has to be effective and sustainable. It has to be scalable because in India, the waste generation is at a very large scale and the solution which we have has to be scalable, has to be able to cater to the, uh, to the amount of waste that has been generated in India, right? So what are the main challenges which we see? So that there's a lack of adequate and large scale infrastructure. There's a lack of awareness due to which there's a lack of actual segregation. There's an absence of, uh, of effective uh, value chain. So we have few of the uh, innovative solution uh, whose uh, who speaker are also uh, 
like uh, is present over here today so they are trying we they and we we are trying to solve the issue but it has to be you know we need more efficient and high skill uh, value chain which we need and there are different stakeholders in the sector when we say about the waste management like as you can see through this uh, through image there are a lot of waste generators waste collectors kabadi wala then we have aggregators recyclers there are a lot of different stakeholders and every stakeholders requirement is, is actually different right and we also have the informal sector which in india is a very uh, they have a large network and uh, it's it's a very uh, you know um, they are they are uh, means present across all the cities so that's uh, the power of the informal sector there's some sort of par uh, this partial uh, value picking happening at all stages mainly at the collection stage and also so due to that you we see a lot of waste which has been collected but then the high value are picked up and the low value usually go to landfill sites so that's a very major challenge due to which mountains of trash so the dump sites which we see you know that is being generated every day and we also always are going to have demand unless and until we solve the issue of uh, mismanagement until we solve it will always have the demand of creating new dump sites landfill sites because of this landfill sites and dump sites what happens is that people living in the vicinity suffer from a lot of medical conditions we also have birds and animals and uh, eating this we also have this waste been leaking to uh, the water bodies as we have talked about earlier that there's 80% of the of the marine litter comes from land sources and we also un, uh, unsolicited fire we have ghg emissions from the landfill sites which is a major contribution to the global warming and to the climate change and we have leachage generation due to which the land the uh, water and the underground water bodies are getting polluted so these are the major challenges which are which are health safety and environment challenges due to mismanagement of waste so how do we manage it so let me give you a brief about us so we are operating since uh, last 11 plus years we have the experience of 11 plus years and we are operating in five in five uh, five cities with a combined capacity of 600 plus tons we are one of the uh, largest uh, dry waste management company and in uh, the last as you can see from the financial year 1819 to 21 22 we have diverted 155000 tons of waste from landfill towards recycling so that's the impact we are trying to create and uh, we help the ulbs achieve zero waste to uh, landfill so when we say zero waste to landfill it is that the dry waste which either we collect or comes to a facility is sorted segregated so that it does not have to go to the landfill site it has it can either uh, either go for recycling or if in case it cannot be recycled it goes for some alternate uh, end disposal method but it should not go to landfill sites so that's our main motto and uh, we are helping ulbs uh, to achieve this then we since we have experience of 11 plus years we have the experience of handling multiple stakeholders with different interest across the entire waste ecosystem right uh, we are also operating indoor which is the largest mrf uh, we have so mrf is a material recovery facility where the waste where the dry waste comes and it is segregated into various categories i have more on that in my next slide and we have uh, we integrate the informal sector uh, we have integrated about 1800 waste pickers with us uh, along our entire supply chain whether it being collection or at at the plant level uh, or at the facility level where we do the waste segregation part we have integrated 1800 plus waste pickers into this and um, also one thing that in the sector of waste the composition varies from truck to truck right so no like you may also observe in your house that the waste which are generating today not necessarily is the same waste which you, you have you had generated yesterday or you will be generating tomorrow right so the waste composition changes and it it changes on truck to truck basis so waste sector we think is one of those sectors which faces this as a challenge but in the end challenges Uh, is what you know brings in more and more uh, innovation and brings out solution which uh, help us solve them so uh, mrf so our solution is mrf integrated with the value addition facility so when we talk about value addition value addition is actually recycling 
uh, the waste into various other commodities. So what happens is, I'll, so when the waste is generated, right? Either we do the collection or we get it from the ULB. It is brought to the MRF facility where it is segregated based on the polymer, based on the size, based on the based on its color, based on the type of waste or how much it, uh, it has been contaminated and all those. So we we segregate it into so many different categories, which is as per the requirement of the recycler. Because in the end, the one who is going to use this waste to make new products, it has to be compatible with their uh, with their requirements. So segregation into all these things is a very major role that we play. And all this is, is already in alignment with the SBM 2.0 operational guidelines, with the solid waste management, with the plastic waste management rules and all those. So after the segregation, we have the main two categories. One is the recyclables. So when we talk about the recyclables, we always aim to achieve true recycling. True recycling is be able to use that same uh, waste into making a product which was similar to its original application, which uh, uh, Mr. Money also said in his, uh, in his presentation, it is bottle to bottle recycling. That from the waste which has been generated, we are trying to uh, make similar type of product without sacrificing the quality or the integrating the process, right? That is one of the main things that we are focusing on. And that is a, uh, like, an, and that is an innovation that helps us bring down the plastic waste generation in a mismanagement point of view, right? So when uh, this waste is again segregated and it is then sent to its uh, recyclers where it is then converted into new, new products which we use every day. And then we have the non-recyclables. So the waste which cannot be recycled, either it is very much contaminated or uh, it has no value chain attached to it in terms of recycling. It is not uh, operationally feasible to uh, do its recycling. So we send it as alternate fuel to the cement companies to waste to energy units where it, uh, it is a very high grade fuel for them. It has a good calfric value and all. Uh, so it helps them uh, derive energy out of it, right? So the waste either goes for recycling or it goes as an alternate fuel. Now, so uh, we, check, please. Yeah. So we have integrated uh, this system uh, uh, over here. So. After this segregation part, we have, so I'll just share my slide is not in here. So there's the indoor video, which I'll show you.
So uh, as I, uh, as it has been uh, is presented through this uh, through this video, how the uh, entire automated plant works, and the automation is mainly required because it helps us achieve the scalability. It helps us do the detailed sorting, which is the need of the hour, as has been stated by uh, this uh, uh, this platform. And efficiency is one of the main things. So right man machine optimization is what we focus on. So I mean, efficiency. And it also helps us segregating various categories. So that's the reason why you know the the uh, the automated MRF helps us achieve that, and it helps us segregate into various categories. And then we are also coming up with the value addition facility. So this is we have this facility coming up uh, over here in uh, in Ahmedabad uh, near Sanan. Uh, it will be uh, like we are focusing on high end application to make high end application granules from the post consumer plastic, right? So we currently are going to have a capacity of fourteen thousand tons per annum for washing and ten thousand tons for. Uh, the granulation and we are we have zero liquid discharge so we are trying to uh, lower the impact the environmental impact of this facility and to lower the uh, impact uh, that is done by the plastic waste generation so we are trying to bring in more high end application granules from this facility from the mrfs so the waste which is coming from that will be uh, recycled over here to close the circular economy loop right and this helps us achieve a sustainable practice to achieve zero waste landfill long term solution it's a long term solution it's inclusive including all stakeholders and it is in compliance with the all uh, the applicable rules and uh, regulations including the solid waste management all the hr and legal uh, compliance so we work in compliance with all of these things so thank yeah, you thank you so much thank you mr ronak i think uh, again uh, uh, your initiative is uh, and nationally and globally appreciated uh, as part of the Swachh Bharat and other initiatives, not only indoor plant, but also Ahmedabad and other plants that you have set up. Thank you very much. So just wanted to know uh, what, uh, you know, you are basically a, a material recovery facility and you help segregate, aggregate and segregate uh, the waste and then add value through uh, various, uh, uh, you know, uh, materials which can be converted into products or you can convert into fuel by sending it to cement industry and others. So what percentage is uh, uh, in the material recovery facility is the plastic? So uh, out of the total dry waste that we get uh, at our facilities, around 40 to 45 percent of the recyclable component is actually plastic that yes. we get at our plant. Thank you. So, uh, do you further sell these plastics to downstream uh, companies, startups, and others? Or do you, uh, once you segregate, before you set up your plant, I think you are also setting up your own uh, uh, value added company. But right now, uh, are you selling these products? Yeah. So, we, uh, we send it to the authorized recyclers uh, for its recycling from where yeah. they make the granules and then use it for uh, Thank you. new. Thank you. Much. Thank you. So this is fabulous. Another uh, fantastic initiative as part of the sector system improvement. Uh, Nepra is actually providing this service to multiple cities. Now I invite uh, Mr. Manish Kotari, founder Rhino Machines. They convert uh, plastics into various upcycled solutions. So thank you, Mr. Manish, and I request you to start the presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Chari. It's been a pleasure to be always invited and able to share what we are doing uh, in the recycling space. Uh, though coming from a manufacturing sector, from the foundry sector, this has been a completely different uh, vertical which I have been involved in. Uh, what I would like to present today is uh, 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 talk about how we could uh, look at uh, um, choosing a, a responsible way for a better uh, and greener urban India, which is a theme of how we could take this plastic into a system. So I, I'll walk you through a, a story which, uh, or something which we have done just to connect the uh, circularity over here. Uh, the government Anganwadi came to us uh, and they were needing a walkway for the children access. So they 
had approached some donors and they were able to say, okay, we will be able to fund you the and donate. So that could give them a walk way to walk during the rain and the different seasons. And this donor organization uh, chose to use recycled pavers instead of traditional concrete pavers. And then they approached us and said, um, so we are manufacturing these silica plastic blocks, which were made from 100% recycled material, 30% plastic, 70% industrial dust, sand, which was being uh, dumped. And they said, could you supply this to us? I said, okay. Uh, we, we went ahead and uh, we were able to, instead of concrete pavers, what you see is a colorful space with uh, silica plastic blocks in a government angarwadi, which has been supported by a CSR donor who uh, uh, set this up in a village. And we covered a space of around 350 square feet of walkway, which could uh, help uh, for 30, 50 mothers and children, right? Uh, a thousand kg of natural resources were saved because you are not using cement, water, sand, or any of those resources. It gave four days of livelihood to people in the recycling space by covering these 350 square feet. And um, it also stopped uh, one same amount of uh, waste going into the uh, landfills because we were using the waste which was being thrown away into making this product. Uh, interesting to know is uh, that when we are talking about uh, PET and uh, different materials, this is one technology which is able to accept the multi-layer plastic as one of the uh, input plastic supply material, we are able to use mixed plastic. Uh, we don't have to segregate plastic from plastic. And this 350 square feet would consume around 2,200 lay uh, as a typically uh, wafer packets from and prevent them from burning as well because it's difficult to recycle them. So all we could do this is because one company made one choice of one activity to create an amplified impact in the world. And this is where I would like to bring this, uh, that if we are looking at making uh, innovations succeed uh, or solutions which uh, innovators are coming up uh, like Banyan Nation or uh, our friend with the water tanks, it is the consumer demand, uh, which, which could perhaps be a very important factor which will drive uh, this space of going into the green economy and helping urban local bodies address the solution of plastic. Because if you are not able to consume as this one company and this one Anganwadi which made a choice that yes, we will go with recycled products, uh, that could trigger this entire circular economy where once we have this uh, uh, consumer uh, so we could we could look at whether it is rural, urban. Um, we are looking at ULBs where we have the plastic supply chain, and it also connect to the industry supply chain where we could take these products into the building community and look at building sustainable uh, construction. So recycled products from the silica plastic block technology could go into pathways, into boundary walls, into a lot of exterior use where. Uh, this can be adapted as one of the products of choice. And that demand is what we would like to bring to the focus. It's a technology which has been developed at Rhino Machines over the past four or five years. Uh, it has been approved, solution, pollution control board authorized. Uh, uh, the entire process was developed at our facility. And it has, uh, starting from the shredder, mixing, batching, and the complete integrated automation has been done over a period of these last two, three years. And several products have been developed. And uh, we have made this into solutions which can go back to the consumer. And the, so on the right, you can see on the over here is the Anganwadi. This is another unique feature being non water absorbent. It has uh, been used as, um, as a wall cladding where it can reduce the absorption of water moisture from the atmosphere because this doesn't absorb. And this is a sustainable, one of the first sustainable toilet blocks set up at Amritsar Airport, if you go next time to the parking area, made with 100% recycled product, steel and SPB. So a framework and cladding designed by an architect 
uh, has been done. So if we are able to promote the choice of using sustainable products, if we are able to imagine the impact which our choice can create from transitioning from a linear economy product into a circular economy product, uh, perhaps we would be able to look at all these sustainable goals of 12, 8, 9, 11, 13, 17, and this contribution of collecting waste, plastic at source, um, uh, collecting dust at source, uh, where we would be able to uh, reduce the need for the multi, uh, the segregation facility, if you are able to. And this is a model which we have been promoting. So I would just leave this message, uh, the, the message over here that agar ghar banana hai, to green banana hai. Our organization has transformed from Rhino machine we are to four enterprises and entrepreneurs have come together to form this new company, Green Banana, where we'll be looking at uh, providing sustainable solutions. We would where uh, the consumers could drive the demand and make this uh, something which we are all looking for making a green uh, uh, urban India. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manish. Excellent presentation. And of course, excellent initiative. So uh, just uh, two points that come to our uh, mind from a city government's perspective. Yeah. One is uh, about the strength of the product. You know, generally, ye hota hai ki, uh, ek thought aata hai ki practitioners ko ye strong hoga ki nahi. Of course, your name uh, says Rhino, you know, which is, yeah. a, which, is a, uh, which is symbolic for strength. But uh, yeah. we would like to hear from you, number one. Number two, about the price point. Uh, are, are your products comparable to the conventional paper blocks, conventional material that's available in the market? Would you like to quickly respond to that? Sure. Thank you. There are very, two very important uh, critical questions. Yes, uh, the strength-wise, they have been found to be equivalent to 30 Newton or 40 Newton premium square paper blocks. We have tested them in the labs. The bricks made are four times stronger than the red clay bricks. So strength-wise, they're absolutely tested in accredited labs. Uh, the certificates are available. Secondly, the price point of view is one of the areas which we really got deeper into for a couple of years to make it viable. And today we can say that all the products which we are offering are competitive at par. And in fact, you might end up saving over a period of time because of the life cycle cost being much lower. Thank you, Mr. Manish. Uh, fantastic. Uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat box. If you could kindly uh, uh, address some of them, that will be fantastic. We'll come back to questions later. Uh, now, I invite uh, uh, Mr. Upendra Divedi. Uh, he is from Trashcon uh, to speak on their experience of uh, creating uh, uh, number one segregation at uh, using their high tech or technology options and also converting products out of this uh, waste. So over to Mr. Upendra Dvivedi to share your experience of Trashcon. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chari. I'll just, uh, you know, share my screen. Can you... Can you share? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see completely. Awesome. Hi, yeah. Good evening, everyone. And uh, I'm Upendra, and I manage uh, strategy and growth at Trashcon. We're based out of Bangalore, and uh, it's absolutely our honor and great privilege to be speaking to you all and get to share our story and what we do. And it's amazing how big a problem it is, and we have countless contributors making their mark, trying to address different parts of the puzzle, and even today. I mean, I am the fifth speaker in terms of, you know, technologies being talked about and we're, you know, one part of the puzzle. Uh, we have, of course, today an aware and very learned audience. And I mean, we all know that despite the plastic ban, despite source segregation and a lot of other initiatives, all of us keep bumping into streets filled with waste that, you know, look like this. What I'm talking about is municipal solid waste and a lot of it that is, you know, dumped on streets and you keep seeing it in our, you know, uh, drains and uh, streets and near our houses and in black spots and all kinds of places. Uh, what we see to be a major challenge in plastic waste management is that about 75% of the plastics that you and I are generating are multi-layered plastics called MLPs. And uh, you know, 
you you see every day from our households we don't really throw a pet bottle or a shampoo bottle right something that may have value but what we definitely throw every day you know are the masala packets the chips packets the biscuits and namkeen packets your uh, chocolate wrappers so despite all our efforts for segregation and all of the other measures the output is that there is non recyclable plastics on our streets drains and rivers they release methane people burn them sometimes and what not and even the waste pickers rarely pick mlps although they would pick something like pet bottles so this really is the problem that you know we thought definitely needed an urgent solution and several existing options as solution have been inadequate because you know they cannot deal with the soiled plastics which are on the streets mixed with food sticking on them and all recyclers you know everyone wants uh, predictable clean plastics so we wanted to build a recycling technology that can deal with this kind of plastic waste without using water without using any other resource that's because we don't want to solve a problem by you know creating another problem and india has villages towns and remotest of the regions where uh, they cannot afford to use additional resources so we wanted to build a system which does not use either of these resources and with the least cost it can recycle waste so we went on to build a technology a recycling technology that recycles the unrecyclable contaminated plastics mainly the mlps the resilient the hard to recycle mlps and it turns them into recycled sheets that we call you know uh, wow boards so uh, these recycled sheets are similar to plywood from which you can make things like benches desks uh, tables and so on these these boards are waterproof termite proof and most importantly we can keep recycling it nearly endlessly and all these photos that you see on the slide right now they are real ones and from the the plastic waste the mlp waste that you see on streets but unlike the learned audience here common people do not easily you know accept a material made from waste so we confirmed by conducting the toxicity test that this material is absolutely safe for indoor usage and uh, recycling process is also you know usually known to have fumes and it is known to be a very polluting space so we made our system in such a way that you can possibly have your meal sitting right next to our plant that's how emission free we have made it and i'll tell you uh, it was a memorable sort of uh, moment for us that we provided benches and desks and tables and chairs to nearly 10000 government school kids in karnataka perhaps from the same waste that was generated by the packaging of the snacks they often have this was one of our early projects and we really cherish the impact we created but apart from that of course we have scalable uh, solutions practical scalable solutions for example lacks of plywoods boards are anyway used every year for uh, shuttering in construction industry plywood generally gives about 5 uh, to 6 repetitions while we are able to provide 30 repetitions at lesser cost so builders readily like this material and most importantly we buy back the boards after use at a scrap value so that's how we are also sort of uh, you know preventing trees from being cut and we also went on to make lumber making machine that uses the same mlp waste and you can see it too has absolutely market beating properties and can be used to have applications such as uh, industrial pallets uh, paper blocks even furniture parts and so on so while this was our vision and it could have worked by itself pretty great we also faced another problem of the raw material every other recycler in india knows they face one challenge you build a great system but the raw material is not available after a certain quantity why because it's on the streets it's mixed with food diapers sanitary napkins rags blood and what not unfortunately even though i segregate at source my city segregates at source india being a country with minimum infrastructure at scale we still see leakages we still see broken systems and the waste find its way on the streets into the rivers and rivers. so uh, the the when waste is like this you know you you cannot recover any value no matter how good your recycling technology is so how do you recover plastic from this waste was our question so we we went across the world and you know even in europe for example they have unsegregated waste and they recover their plastics uh, they recover their plastics uh, through uh, several machineries but their waste is very different their waste is only 20% organics while ours can be up to 70 to 80% wet waste in in, in india our plastic waste is dripping with you know very well dal sambar and chutney and what not so you can't recycle our waste the same way moreover their system requires significantly high skilled manpower and most importantly it costs millions of dollars in setting up and furthermore in running it 
it occupies two to three acres of land just to do two three hundred tons of waste so this is not something that you can copy paste in a country like ours is what we understood but then we needed solutions that are cost effective space effective and most importantly they should be able to run by unskilled labor and we have seen who are even often drunk at sites so that's when we wanted to see what is happening in india for material recovery what you in india see is uh, trommels often so trommels we all know are nothing but rotary sieves and they alone cannot help you recover plastics from the kind of waste the kind of fresh waste that's out there and that's why these trommels are often seen clogged and parked aside in many of our cities even in cities where they're trying to use it with a lot of efforts you might know hardly 50% waste is actually being recovered and the remaining half again goes into the landfills so that's when our team we had to get back to the ground and we spent days and nights in dump sites for nearly 3 years to figure out on how on earth can we recover value from a waste that even waste pickers don't want with all the support and blessings and of course the hard work of our team i'm happy to share that we indeed succeeded in building a decentralized material recovery facility that we call trashbot it allows hand free pro waste processing and segregation with very high level of efficiencies trashbot is our patent patented solution and it recovers plastics from waste that look like this from mixed waste and we have a range of real time videos that i will avoid playing right now because i know this paucity of time but please reach out to us and we're happy to share more we started with just 2 tons a day and today we have machines with over 200 tons a day capacity trashbot to put simply uh, is an intelligent sequence of mechanical unit operations uh, put in a way that requires less space less electricity minimal manpower and yet gives high levels of efficiency it also has lowest overall operating cost per ton of waste so that's where we stand our uh, our 200 tons uh, a day plant can actually uh, just takes about 2000 square feet of land and uh, it only it ha it has efficiency of 85% it just needs about three unskilled labor to run it and it operate as a cost which is several times lesser than what the government pays our technology setup is great relief for opportunity for municipalities in terms of both solving the waste problem as well as savings and financial benefits you can see on the slide for example you get later facility you have better rankings in swatch survection and you get to make huge savings on tipping fee and even on transport we know municipalities in india some of them are spending tens of crores just on sending the recovered material for rdf so municipalities that can even earn revenue since we offer a buyback for recycled sheets that are produced using our machines this this is one of our you know case studies in bomasandra uh, near bank it's a town near bangalore where we fixed 14 black spots and enabled 30 waste workers into dignified employment uh, after our intervention this is how the place looked like uh, here is the sort of entire flow chart of how we did that you can have a look and uh, as far as you know our customers is concerned you can see i mean our clients include some of the biggest names in the industry and as well as you know key municipalities we're already in 20 cities and six states already uh odisha is next we have already exported to philippines and we have nepal bangladesh and sri lanka in our pipeline uh our absolutely made in india technology has been awarded globally multiple times and you can see we have numerous awards challenges and recognition across the world we have uh, received appreciation from none other than our honorable prime minister of india and from several well known names in the industry and public space uh, last year i'm very happy to share that we were also invited at world economic forum davos where you know we presented and engaged with uh, you know uh, on on panels with prime ministers and presidents of the world it's a matter of pride that a made in india technology was recognized at such a global platform first from the right hand side you can see on the screen on the main floor is niveda who is our founder and ceo i'm sure Professor Chari absolutely, you know, uh, knows her very well. Uh, in the uh, uh, this is this is us, you know, again presenting to the Spanish ambassador. We have we've been covered in more than 200 media publications. We've been covered in U.S., Germany, and so on. We've also been covered in quite a few uh, short films and documentaries globally as well as nationally. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm very happy to share that there was also a full-fledged global film premiere last month. Uh, of back to zero which is a short film on our journey entirely made by world economic forum team we are so grateful for all the support and recognition we have received so far and i include aski uh, you know in in them as our founders and uh, our advisors and of course our teams because of which uh, i mean without whom we this would not have been possible 
thank you so much for listening and you know we're we're more than happy to be reached out for the discussions and collaborations thank you so much thank you uh, mr upendra i think uh, he brought out a very important uh, <clears throat> solution uh, to the table some of you asked about how about the small and medium towns so this is a decentralized uh, waste uh, segregation system but also uh, it is also not only just segregating but also creating what is called wow boards converting waste into products which can be used and created an impact and that's what we have seen uh, some of the benches and uh, tables used in the schools so i think it's a, a fabulous case of uh, system improvement but also using it uh, for circularity for the principles of circularity are followed and uh, the material was put back into the system thank you mr upendra i think we have we have had five fabulous uh, experiences each is unique in its own way to uh, reduce the plastic but also promote uh, circularity in the system two presentations are primarily looking at uh, how the system of municipal solid waste management can be strengthened uh, and three presentations and in fact uh, trashcon also spoke about how circularity can be strengthened through the process of uh, business models as well as technology solutions thank you very much all of you we have exceeded the time but i think uh, there are uh, these are wonderful presentations all these presentations will be shared with you along with the contact details of uh, all the innovators that spoke today uh, i encourage all the cities to connect with them feel free to reach out to them feel free to reach out to wash innovation up if you need any facilitation if you need further information and we would be very happy to do so so with this words i would now hand over to pratibha if you have any final say uh, final words before we close the uh, the webinar today thank you very much over to you pratibha uh, thank you professor jari and uh, thank you all the speakers it was uh, wonderful to listen to all of you uh, and uh, thank you all the participants for uh, joining today do you have any questions to ask these uh, uh, these speakers as a uh final some final questions that you want to ask the speakers anybody okay so uh, i think uh, uh, i i think there are not uh, not many questions to be asked um i would like to on behalf of administrative staff college of india i would like to thank all the uh, speakers uh, um, and also the participants for today and uh, that's it thank you so much from from aski thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you we thank close you. the program thank you thank you, thank you.